Welcome back everyone. This is my video for the Suicide Squad movie ending and post credit scenes. Obviously there's a couple post credit scenes with a bunch of Easter eggs teasing what's coming next. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be doing a couple more videos for the movie too, like a full breakdown video with Easter eggs for the entire movie starting tomorrow. Careful for spoilers if you have not seen the movie yet. It's on HBO Max right now, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. But starting at the end of the movie, they reveal that the real MacGuffin is actually a hard drive full of data containing the truth about the United States government's involvement in the Starro experiments. Throughout the movie, they spend a lot of time during several different scenes hyping up just how terrible the thinker is, Gaius Graves, Peter Capaldi's character. He's a new version of the thinker from the comics, but he's from the Suicide Squad comics, and he was based on a character that they never really gave a name to. But he's been performing these terrible experiments with Starro in mind control for the past 30 years at this secret Nazi base or former Nazi base called Jodenheim. I know I just got done doing all these Loki episodes. James Gunn, also a big Marvel director with the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. So it's just a funny coincidence that the name Jodenheim shows up during a big DC movie. But they reveal amongst the rebels, the other locals on Cortal Maltese, that it's known as a place where the current dictator at any given time sends his political enemies, any dissidents he doesn't like, even people who just casually say mean things about him, their whole families, women and children, and they're never seen from again. So even though the new dictator who Harley Quinn kills during the events of the movie takes over killing the previous one and they want it to seem like this really WTF moment, they imply that the previous dictator was just as bad as this new one and that the United States government helped put him in power and keep him in power for the past 30 years or so, turning a blind eye to anything he did because of what they were doing in this secret Nazi base with Starro. At the end of the movie, Rick Flagg learns the truth about what the thinker's been doing down here, experimenting on all these people, trying to create a way to control and weaponize Starro for the US government, control large groups of people at scale the way that Ratcatcher 2 controls armies of rats all at the same time. Flagg tries to call him out on it. The thinker says that he's actually been on the government's payroll, the US military's payroll this whole time. And just to make it seem extra creepy, when the camera is panning around the room, they show you that he's been experimenting on pregnant women, children, the elderly. He even makes a joke about experimenting on a journalist that they currently have strung up who says some mean things about the government. And all of it was done on the orders of the US government for the purposes of weaponizing Starro. So the thinker tries to play it as if he's not the real villain here, like I was just doing what I was told from your government. Even Starro, who was supposed to be kind of the big bad in the movie, metaphorically and literally because he is so huge, you kind of sympathize with him because he uses his MC ability to speak through the people begging Flag to help him escape and says the thinker's been torturing him for the past 30 years as part of his experiments. And if it wasn't clear, Starro was not lying when he was saying that. Even though he does go on a rampage later trying to take control of the island, this is my city now, it's only in retaliation for the past 30 years of torture that he endured. They reveal the whole reason why he was captured in the first place is that he was discovered floating in outer space near Earth's orbit by United States astronauts, then mind controlled the astronauts when the shuttle returned, the government just took him to Jodenheim and Koto Maltese and made their bargain with that previous dictator, putting him in power so that they can conduct their experiments on him in private. They also clarify Starro's powers within the DCEU. They say that as he controls more and more people, he grows larger and larger. And for the most part, this version of Starro seems like he dies at the end of the movie, but because he spawns in a really weird way, it's always possible that a version of him winds up surviving and shows up in another future DC movie at some point. He could always come back in the future. But while Rick Flagg is trying to call an audible here in the basement, release the data from the hard drive to expose what the government's been doing to the rest of the world, John Cena's peacemaker reveals that he was also on a secret mission given him by Amanda Waller to prevent any data or information from Jodenheim from getting out. He was supposed to ensure that everything was destroyed, the base itself, including all the files and records. So while Bloodsport, Harley Quinn, King Shark, the rest of the Suicide Squad try to deal with the Cortal Maltese army and Starro himself, Peacemaker and Rick Flagg are having their fight to the death, all while Jodenheim itself is crumbling around them. The way they play this though is that Peacemaker does not hate Rick Flagg, but he's so committed to doing what he's told to do by any figure of authority from the US government, protecting Lady Liberty, so to speak, like protecting the idea of what he thinks America is. He has a knockdown, drag out fight to the death with Rick Flagg to prevent the data from getting out. And the whole idea is that Amanda Waller is manipulating him because he's so thick headed. She'd been saying throughout the movie that something was at stake that would threaten to destroy the entire country. Like early on, they make you think that it might be Starro that she's referring to, but really the whole time she was referring to the data. 
Like, yes, Dara was bad, but she thought that the data getting out and the truth about the government getting out would be even worse. So in true fashion, the whole idea in Suicide Squad movies is that there aren't any real big heroes, although there's some jokes about being superheroes or becoming superheroes when they defeat Starro at the end of the movie. Polka Dot Man getting one last dig in at his mother. The idea is that all the characters in the movies are kind of villains, just some of them are worse than others. Even the U.S. government. Like, the U.S. government is kind of the real villain of the movie secretly at the end of the day because they're the ones that are responsible for everything that's happening now. But this whole idea that Peacemaker will do anything that anyone tells him, that's why they spent so much time earlier in the movie having him say all those WTF funny things about eating all the dicks on the beach if he was told to. Because they wanted to establish that he would literally do anything that anyone in a position of authority over him told him to do, unquestioningly. Then after he's killed Rick Flagg and Yoda Hein continues to crumble around their entire squad while they're trying to not get crushed to death, Bloodsport just happens to land right in front of Peacemaker and learns exactly what just happened with Rick Flagg. They face off in a classic gunslinger standoff moment, paying off their rivalry that had been going on since the beginning of the movie. They spent the entire movie with the two of them having arguments about who was the better crack shot because they both had very similar abilities. They make jokes about that too, like you do exactly what I do. No, I do it better. They had contests to see who could kill the most people in the jungle, who could pull off the most creative kills. So Bloodsport winds up beating him by using a smaller bullet, slicing through Peacemaker's larger exploding round. The bullet pierces him in the throat. He goes down and starts bleeding out. But then, wait for it, the post credit scene. Remember, comic book movie logic, nobody's dead unless you see their body. Bloodsport, Harley Quinn, the other surviving members of the team, defeat Starro, R.I.P. Polka Dot Man. The way Starro goes out, they also want to remind you he's not the real villain here either. As he lay dying, he says all he really wanted to do was look up at the stars because he'd spent the last 30 years trapped in that underground prison. Bloodsport does take the hard drive of all the evidence and uploads it to his own private cloud servers with protocols that will release it if he gets killed, but strikes a bargain with Amanda Waller not to release it in exchange for everyone's freedom. So if it wasn't clear, at the very end of the movie, even though they argue about whether or not they should have released the data, he did not release the data. So that's why Amanda Waller isn't sending other teams of suicide squads after them. But he still has all the data. He could always release it in the future if he wants to. Any of the surviving members of the team here that made it out like King Shark, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2, any of them can come back in future movies. But we know Harley Quinn is definitely going to come back in future movies. But then during the first post credit scene, after a short time jump, like later that night, after they've already come back to America, you see Weasel on the beach where Michael Rooker's savant placed him at the beginning of the movie in that hilarious scene of them all trying to land and then getting killed off quickly. He pronounced him dead at the time, like the Weasel's dead, and they made this big joke about how come nobody checked whether or not the Weasel could actually swim. But he coughs, sits up, revealing that he survived, and kind of looks around like, where'd everybody go? Confused, and then makes some noises and runs off into the jungle with that funny way of running that we saw earlier in the movie. If you guys didn't know either, the reason why Weasel looks so crazy and messed up is because James Gunn said that he based him on the look of Bill the Cat, the famous cartoon cat, who was purposefully designed to look kind of horrible and funny at the same time. So Weasel's still alive now, living in the jungles of Cortol Maltese until we're told otherwise. But then during the second post credit scene, this actually pushes the plot forward, teases the next big project. They set up the big Peacemaker HBO series with John Cena's character. Another short time jump later, both John Economos and Amelia Harcourt's characters show up at Peacemaker's hospital room, complaining that Amanda Waller saddled them with babysitting Peacemaker is retaliation for them all knocking her out at the end of the movie, preventing her from activating all the bombs in the team's heads. And the doctor asks them what they need him for, what's so important, what's the big deal with Peacemaker, and Amelia says, oh, it's no big deal, we just need him to save the world. And that's their way of teasing the plot of the Peacemaker HBO series. So a bunch of the Suicide Squad movie actors will be back for those episodes. Season 1 is going to start releasing episodes in January next year, and I will be doing full episode videos for that when it drops. The episodes will just follow the continuing adventures of John Cena's Peacemaker as he goes on more missions for Amanda Waller. James Gunn said he's hoping that they get renewed for season two, but I think that DC wants him back so bad right now for more DC projects that it's a foregone conclusion that they will do a season two. James Gunn hasn't really said anything about his next DC movie because he has Guardians of the Galaxy 3 that he's going to do next and that Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which is sort of a Marvel version of the Star Wars holiday special. And he actually said that that's going to be canon in required viewing before Guardians 3. 
We'll learn more about that soon, but it'll take place between the events of Thor Love and Thunder because all the Guardians of the Galaxy will show up in that movie, but before the events of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The whole thing with the Peacemaker HBO series is it is like DC's version of the Marvel Disney Plus stuff where you have all the movie actors doing TV shows on their big streaming service. John Cena's Peacemaker is just the first series that they're doing. They have the Green Lantern HBO series. There's the Batman HBO series that's the spinoff from the Matt Reeves Batman movie. I will be doing videos for all those episodes. Right now I'm working on my full Suicide Squad breakdown and Easter eggs video that should post Friday. Make sure you have alerts enabled so you don't miss that. And my Marvel What If Episode 1 video will post next Wednesday. New episodes of that every week, just like my Loki episode videos. Everyone click here for that brand new Marvel What If trailer and Easter eggs and click here for that brand new footage of Ben Affleck's Batman in the Flash movie. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.